And everybody in a place said, It's wonderful to be with you tonight. And I pray that this will not be the last time in Jesus' name. And I pray that tonight the Lord will open our eyes. We we'll behold wonderful, wondrous things out of the world in Jesus' name. Tonight is Bible study night. Somebody there shout Bible study night. And I believe you came with your Bible. Where is your Bible? Let me see that. That's the word will conquer the devil. It will conquer every problem in your life. Just one sentence out of that book will put the devil on the run. And tonight we are not looking for just one sentence. I'm going to sweep over a lot of passages as the word is coming, entering your heart. Something mighty is entering. Something supernatural is entering. And those who are outside, don't allow anything there to disturb you. Pay attention because something must happen tonight. And those of us inside and outside, everywhere, something wonderful, something glorious. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Keep your Bible in your hand, raise it up, raise it up. You believe everything there, you accept everything there. You're going to obey everything there. And the promises of God in that word will enter into your life tonight. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you because you have granted all our people, your own children, men, women, boys, girls, you students, you have granted a journey message to be here. Lord, we pray it will not be in vain in Jesus' name. We pray that tonight you open the pages of the scriptures. Reveal yourself to everyone. Receive the Lord, reveal the Lord, the Savior to everyone. And reveal the truth of your word to every heart tonight in Jesus' name. I will pray that as this word comes in, light will come in. Salvation will come in. Healing will come in. Deliverance will come in. Every heavenly blessing you have for your people will come in in Jesus' name. And from here, send forth the word of the gospel that will liberate everyone that hears. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can have your seat. We're coming to John chapter 5. Tonight we're looking at John chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 30 to verse 47. John chapter 5. We're looking at it from verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father, which has sent me. If I be a witness of myself, my witness is not true. Notice that verse 31, and notice the word there, the word witness. And as I go through some of the verses, I want you to underline the word witness there. It says in verse 31, if I be a witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that bears, tell me, witness of me. And I know that the witness which witnesseth of me is true. Can you see the repetition of the word there? Witness, witnessing, witnesseth. Then he tells us in verse 33, he said, ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. That's the word again. And he says, and I receive not testimony from man, but the things I say that she might be saved. He says, I'm telling you this so that you can be saved. So you can become whole. So you can be made righteous. So you can be prepared for heaven. And so that the blessings of God will flow into your life. And tonight is that night. 
he was a burning witness, he was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. I have greater witness, that's the word again, I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, he has a born witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shame. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has said, ye believe not. Verse 39, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Study the scriptures. Read the scriptures. Examine the scriptures. Understand the scriptures. Be educated, be enlightened on the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. I'm reading from verse 45 now. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, who in whom ye trust. For he had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Think about that. Moses wrote of him. Isaiah wrote of him. Jeremiah wrote of him. Hosea wrote of him. All those prophets wrote, wrote of him. He said, the witness concerning me, and the poor witness that I am he, the Messiah, the Christ, the Jesus, the Savior, the one that is to come, the Redeemer, that will redeem us from all iniquity. All those Old Testament people wrote concerning him. If ye, but if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Tonight, as you see that word witness repeated a lot of times in that passage, we're talking about a kind of witness tonight. The witnessing to the fact that Jesus Christ is who he claimed to be. Tonight, the message is the threefold witness to Christ's deity. The threefold witness, that is witness number one, witness number two, witness number three, all those three coming together, bearing witness of the Lord Jesus Christ as to his eternality, as to his infinity, as to his unlimited power, as to the very fact that he wasn't created, he had been from all eternity and it continues until eternity. They bore witness to the deity of Christ, the divinity of Christ, the sonship of Christ, and the redeeming virtue of Jesus Christ, redeeming power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you hear the witness tonight from the Father, the witness tonight from the Scriptures, the witness tonight from John the Baptist, you understand that this is He, the Jesus we're talking about. This is he. He is the savior. No other one. This is he. He is the redeemer. There's no other one. He is the uh, deliverer. And there is no other one. I want to tell you something. That your individual life or your family life or your community life, any kind of life you live will be meaningful, meaningful because of what you know. What you know. If you come to this world and you know nothing, no opinion, no idea, no knowledge, no understanding about anything, your life will not amount to much. But what you know, that's very, very important. The things you know, the ideas you know, the opinions you know, the objects you know, the principles you know, that knowledge is very important. But more than what you know, is who you know. A man who you know. The man that might be a builder, the man that might be a helper, the man that might be a benefactor, the one that might be a lover, a constant companion, who you know is more important than what you know. And when you join those two things together, what you know plus who you know 
brings an explosion in your life. And tonight I want to tell you what you ought to know as well as who you ought to know. You know, if you know someone, if you know somebody, you're able to build a relationship between yourself and that person. And the relationship you build between that person you know and yourself will improve your quality of life to know someone well enough so that you can commit your life to him you need to know what others know about him and that's how life is you are born into this world you didn't know your father you didn't know your mother but others knew mother and then you begin to see mother and brothers and sisters and others they are also addressing her as mommy eventually you begin to know her and who you know as your mother how that is valuable in your life how you know a teacher other people also know the teacher he taught me I learned from him, he got me through knowledge, he got me out of ignorance, and got me to knowledge, and then you yourself, you know that teacher, not personally, who you know, who teaches you, who you know, who drives your life, who you know, who influences your life, who you know, who attracts your life, who you know, who puts something in your life, that's what makes life meaningful, and we're talking about Jesus Christ now, to know him and to know his words, and to know his promises, and to know his power, what we know of him, and who we know about him. You bring those two things together, and a glorious thing is going to happen in your life. Because now you know him, and there you can tell. He even gives you the credentials. He gives you all the identifying marks of himself. And the Father spoke about him. And John the Baptist spoke about him. And his miracles spoke about him. And the scriptures spoke about him. And as you bring everything together, this very night, you will know him more. Yeah. And as you know him more, something from heaven will drop into your heart. Yeah. Your life will never be the same again. And the things you've been asking for, the things you've been wondering, can I have this, can I have this, can I have that? All that is in Christ. And the more you know him, the more you're going to have these great things effected in your life in Jesus' name. And thank God tonight is my night. Somebody there said tonight is my night. Look at that word witness again. Look at the word witness again. Verse 31. If I be a witness of myself, my witness is not true. That is, if I'm the only one talking about myself, and the Father doesn't talk about me, and the Holy Ghost doesn't talk about me, and the prophets do not talk about me, and Moses did not talk about me, and John the Baptist did not talk about me, then it's nothing. But when you think of me talking about myself, and the Father talking about me, and the angels talking about me and the prophets talking about me and the scriptures talking about me said so you can believe the witness you can believe that testimony and as you believe that testimony salvation will come give me a good amen, amen. deliverance will come another amen. amen and all the blessings of god will co congregate your life in jesus name amen. The threefold, the threefold witness to Christ's deity. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the recognition of the Savior by his forerunner. The recognition of the Savior by his forerunner. Somebody came up before him. You understand? Forerunner? Forerunner. Somebody running before the king and telling the people ahead of time, the king is coming. Get ready. The king is coming. Get ready. John the Baptist was a forerunner. He was a herald and he was running before Jesus Christ. He says, I've seen him. I know him. I've looked at him. The Lord told me, this is he, the one that will change your life and he went telling everybody he running ahead of him the forerunner he has come and he comes to tell you tonight the one that will transform your life he has come the one that will change your destiny he has come and the one that will put power and purity everything you need in your life he has come tonight and the forerunner is telling you i bear witness i bear witness the recognition of the savior by his forerunner point number two is a reaffirmation 
the reaffirmation of the son by the father by the father after john has spoken about this one that has come a savior a redeemer a deliverer a, the captain of our salvation the one who has gone to heaven not to prepare heaven for us after john had spoken about him then the father in heaven he bore witness concerning him and we have the reaffirmation of the son by the father now number three is the revelation of the scriptures as the foundation the foundation of all witness is the foundation of the truth is the foundation of the testimony that this is jesus the fullness of christ the faith in christ the faithfulness of christ the power in christ and what you're able to have in christ here the scripture tells us and we have the revelation of the scriptures as the foundation and i pray a foundation will come in your life today a solid foundation that the wind will not blow you anymore opinions of men will not blow you anymore you will stand firm i said you will stand firm and whatever may be happening in the world you are going to stand and nothing will make you fall or fail or falter in jesus name i thought i put people not to say amen, amen. Point number one now the recognition of the Savior by his forerunner. I'm coming to John chapter 5, John chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 30. It says, I can of my own self do nothing. It says, I open the eyes of the blind, not by myself, the power of the Father. And then I make the lame to walk, not by myself, is the power of the Father. And the people that were born impotent, I tell them in the word, get up, and they get up, and I send the word unto them, creative word, mighty word, powerful word, anointed word, and all their bondages are broken. And he said, I do all that, not of myself. He says, as I hear, I judge. And my judgment, my evaluation, my decision is just. And then he says, this because I seek not mine own, but the will of the Father that has sent me. The will of the Father is to save everyone. That's what I seek. The will of the Father is to deliver every captive. That's what I seek. The will of the Father is to set every prisoner free. He said, that's what I'm seeking. The will of the Father is to take every creature, take them from earth, and take them to heaven. He said, I'm not seeking my will. I'm just seeking the will of the Father. That's why I go about. I go here. I go there. I touch that life. I transform the lives because that's the will of the Father. The will of the Father tonight is that your life will become better your life will become richer a redemption is coming to you you never saw before something is happening on the inside of your heart every knot he will lose every mountain he will move away every chain he will break because that is the will of the father he will cleanse you tonight and then he said in verse 31 if i be a witness of myself my witness is not true there is another there is another that beareth witness of me there is another that beareth witness of me who is he talking about here he's talking about the forerunner now he said and i know that his witness which he witnesses of me is true he's going to mention his name you sent unto john and he bear witness unto the truth you sent unto john and then you say who is that person there who is that one coming there and then before you were even able to wait for the answer he pointed to me and he said behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world he bore witness concerning me i received not the testimony from man but these things i say that ye might be saved he said i'm reminding you of that testimony of john i'm reminding you of that witness of my forerunner so that you'll be saved if you are not saved yet tonight you are going to get saved and if you are saved you have security of that salvation tonight in jesus name he was a burning and a shining light and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light you see john the baptist he was a man known to god 
John the Baptist. He was a man that was known to the prophet Isaiah even before his birth. Think about this now. About 700 years before John the Baptist was born, Isaiah was talking about him. And he said, there's somebody coming. Is going to make the way for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords. So important a man, John the Baptist, that Isaiah will talk about him 700 years before he came. And just before he came, an angel came to the father and said, You're going to have a child. Is the child that Isaiah had been talking about. And he'll be like this, he'll be like that. The Holy Ghost will be upon him. This was the man, John the Baptist, known to the Father, known to God, John the Baptist, known to angels, John the Baptist, known to the prophets of the Old Testament, John the Baptist, known to the people of the land that now came to point attention to the Lord Jesus Christ when they said, who are you? He said, no, I'm not the Christ, I'm not the Messiah, but he's coming, he's coming. And then the following day he came, he said, did I tell you he was coming? Look at him now, he will take your sins away. He will take your body away. He will take all the chains and all the shackles. He'll take them away from your life in Jesus' name. Uh, look at this in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 6. John chapter 1 verse 6. It says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John, the same came for a witness. He said, this is my life. This is my ministry. This is my mission. This is the reason I came all the way from heaven. This is the reason my father, my mother gave birth to me. It says the same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light that all men through him might believe. All men who are here tonight might believe. Men and women who are here tonight, you will believe. Christ has now come. And Christ is now revealed unto us. And here John is saying, I came to bear witness to that light. Look at verse 8. He was not that light. But he was sent to bear witness of the light. The forerunner. Bear, bear any witness to the light of the world. And to the light of every man. It says that was the true light in verse 9. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Look at verse 15. It says John bear witness of him. Verse 15. You see that word over and over and over. It's saying I will say you are not sure about Jesus. Listen to the witnesses and listen to what John has said because he bear witness of him and cried saying, this is he, this is he, your savior, this is he, your healer, this is he, your redeemer, this is he, the way, the truth and the life, this is he of whom I speak, he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me. We're coming to Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 1. I want to see who this John is. How this John bore witness. Matthew chapter, tell me. Chapter 3. What verse? Verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. It says, This is he. Isaiah spoke about him. This is he. He came to prepare the way before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He came to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ, who will save the whole of humanity. Look at verse 5. Then came out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. And when they came, what did he tell them? When they came, what did he reveal to them? When they all came, like you have all come tonight, he revealed Jesus unto them. And Jesus will be revealed to you tonight. Look at verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me. He was a forerunner, and 
the Lord was coming after him. The king was coming after him. The Lord was coming after him. The redeemer was coming after him. So he said, he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in the sand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garden. But he will burn up the chaff with un unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus. Can you make the connection together? He just said now, somebody is coming, is coming, is coming. And I'm not worthy to bear his shoe. All of a sudden, after he said that, then cometh Jesus. As we talk about Jesus to you, it will appear to you. It will appear to save your soul. It will appear to heal your body. He'll appear to take your problems away. We're talking about the mountain mover. And just as we're talking about him, then he says, I'm the one the preacher was talking about. I came to help you. I came to save you. I came to deliver you. And then as you open your heart, that deliverance will come immediately. Then come Jesus from Galilee to Jordan. And then on to John. It says, the baptized of him. And John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Comest thou to me? And Jesus answering says unto him, Suffer ye to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And he suffered him that is, he permitted him. That Christ is here tonight. And then we're coming to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We're reading from verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. Bearing witness. You've seen how you bore witness in Matthew chapter 3. He comes to another place now because this was his full time job, his full time mission, his full time message, his full time ministry to bear witness unto the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him. You see this man, he wasn't seeing Satan, you will not see Satan. He was not seeing demons, you will not see demon. You know there are many people, they see more Satan than more of Satan than they see of Jesus. I will see more of Jesus. You know some people, they see more of demons than they see of Jesus. I will see more of Jesus. Say it for yourself, I will see more of Jesus. Some people see darkness, they don't see the light. Some people see evil, they don't see goodness. Some people see destruction, they don't see the repair, the restorer. But we'll come here to see Jesus. Somebody outside there said we came here to see Jesus. If you're going to see Jesus, let me see your hand up. I want to see Jesus. You'll see him in Jesus' name. Verse 29, the next day, the next day John says, Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, I will see him today. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He'll take all your sins away. I come into John chapter 1 verse 33. Verse 33, we're still talking about this John chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 33. It says, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining upon and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw, thank God I will see. And I saw, thank God I will see. You know, if you read the Bible, you don't see Jesus, it's all in vain. You've read the Bible in vain. If you come to the Bible study, you don't see Jesus, it's all in vain. If you go to church, you don't see Jesus Christ, Jesus as Savior, and Jesus as Sanctifier, and Jesus as our healer, Jesus as a baptizer in the Holy Ghost, Jesus as a deliverer, Jesus as our all in all, Jesus as the coming King. Thank God you'll see him tonight. And I saw, and I bear record that this is the son of God then the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus and looking upon Jesus and looking upon Jesus look at him and be saved 
Look at him and be healed. And look on him and be delivered. Look on him and all your chains will be broken away in Jesus' name. Look at him and look at him. Even if your eyes are blind, still open those blind eyes and look at him. And when you look his direction, those blind eyes will open. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Somebody there say that. Behold the Lamb of God. Say that again. Behold the Lamb of God. He revealed Christ as the Savior, the Savior of the world. We'll come to point number two now. Point number two, the reaffirmation of the Son by the Father. The reaffirmation of the Son by the Father. We're coming back to John chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 36 to 38. John chapter 5 we're reading from verse 36 now this is the second point the reaffirmation of the son by the father it says in verse 36 but i have greater witness than that of john i have greater witness than that of john look up for a moment john was a human being John was here on earth. John was natural. John was like you and I. Yes, a prophet of God. Yes, a great man of God. But still human. And Jesus is saying now, I have a greater witness. If you're losing a greater witness, that's a witness coming from heaven. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so the almighty God is greater than John. As the heavens are greater, higher than the earth, so the angels are greater than John. He said, your father testimony of John, he pointed at me and said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now, listen to heaven. Listen to God. Listen to the Creator. Listen to Alpha and Omega. Listen to the one that had no beginning and has no end. Listen to the eternal God. And he says, I have greater witness than that of John for the words which the Father has given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. He gave me the power. He gave me the unction. He gave me the anointing. He gave me the authority. And because the Father is always present with me, in his name, in his power, in his authority, I do all these things. And that is a greater witness than that of John. Look at verse 37. The Father himself, wonderful. And the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. The Father himself, who has sent me, has borne witness of me. Uh, look up here for a moment. You know, some, sometimes there are people that will argue, they say, this Jesus you are talking about, about this, about this, they don't understand. Is the Father in heaven, the Almighty God himself. They say, I believe in God, I believe in God. Okay, if you believe in God, listen to what he said about his only begotten son. You will listen. I said you were listening. How can you argue with the almighty God? How can you argue with the creator of the heavens and the earth? How can you argue with the one that spoke from heaven? Did he speak from heaven? Of course, yes. Look at Matthew. Come back to Matthew. We're looking at chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 15. In Matthew chapter 3, reading from verse 15, here is what it says. And Jesus answered said unto him, Suffer ye to be so now. So, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Look at this. Then he suffered him. And Jesus Give me that name. Jesus. And Jesus, somebody shout that name. Jesus. Something is going to happen. I look at this. And Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from where? From Jerusalem? A voice from the temple, a voice from the street. Tell me from where? Who is the one talking from heaven? I said, Who is the one talking from heaven? If you say you don't believe that, 
then you make God a liar. If you say you don't believe that, then you say, I don't accept what the Almighty God is saying. He's your creator. He's the one that puts you here on earth. He's the one that owns the land upon where we are built. He's the one that has everything. He's the one that puts you here. And when he wants to remove your breast, you are gone. And he's the one talking now. You are here. Look at verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying this. Is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Somebody shout amen. Yeah. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. We're coming to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And here we're reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 17 verse 1. You see the father that also bore witness to the son. The reaffirmation of the son by the father. The father reaffirmed. That's my son. Be careful how you treat him. That's my son. Be careful how you neglect him. That's my son. Be careful how you reject him. I love him. You must love him too. I sent him. You must receive him. That's my only begotten son. Matthew chapter 17. We're reading from verse 1. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as the light. And behold, and behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. And while he yet speak, while he yet speak, behold, a cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, Tell me, tell me out loud. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Tell me the rest. Hear ye him. He'll tell you about salvation. Hear ye him. He'll talk about repentance. Hear ye him. He'll talk about righteousness. Hear ye him. He'll talk about a new life. Hear ye him. He'll talk about his blood that is shed for the remission of sin, for the cleansing of the sins of humanity. Hear ye him. The Almighty God said, There's no other mouthpiece, and there's no other speaker, and there's no other person authorized from heaven, anointed by heaven to speak unto you the word of redemption the almighty God himself bearing witness unto the son he said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him I pray you all hear you will not neglect his word you will not overlook his word you will hear in Jesus name the Heavenly Father has reaffirmed that Jesus Christ is his only begotten Son. And Peter never forgot that, uh, that mount of transfiguration. You will never forget. Today, you will never forget. We're coming to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. In 2 Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Verse 16, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but to our eyewitnesses of his majesty. You see that? He said, we're bearing witness to you. We're testifying to you. And we're telling you of this Jesus Christ this is not fable. This is not dream. This is not story. This is reality. Because we can be a witness of his majesty. For he received, verse 17, for he received from heaven, he received from God, the Father, honor and glory. When there came such a voice from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He was bearing witness, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Somebody there, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Say that, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Say that all together, one, two, three, go. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You, 
you know people will tell you, you know people will tell you, you say that Jesus is the Son of God. Uh-uh, we didn't say Almighty God said. The Father said, the voice came from heaven, and the voice from heaven said, the one that is greater than angels, the one that is greater than John the Baptist, the one that is greater than everybody you have ever known, the one that is greater than all the people of the earth put together. He was the one that said from heaven, he said, there is no other person, this is the only one. And this is, is not an angel, it's not an angel, this is my only begotten son my beloved son in whom i am well please look at verse 18 and this word and this word which came from where verse 18 and this word this voice which came from where i said from where from heaven look up here they say you people I'm Christian, I'm a Christian. You're following the religion of the white people. Those white people said, We have our own religion. We are black people. We are Africans here. And we follow this. We follow this. But you people, you're following religion coming from Jerusalem. I I'm not following religion coming from Jerusalem. They say you're following religion coming from the white people. You said, Not me. They say you're following religion coming from America, coming from somewhere. No, I'm following something that came from heaven. Which one are you following? I said, which one are you following? You see, look at this again, verse 18. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. And thank God, this is your mount of transfiguration. And the Lord will do something wonderful in your life today in Jesus' name. John the Baptist was a great witness but then God the Heavenly Father is a greater witness God the Father spoke audibly to everyone's hearing and he bore an unmistakable witness that Jesus Christ is his son his beloved son his only begotten son and he said hear ye him believe him tonight you are going to be saved believe him tonight he will redeem your life believe him tonight he will change your life and wash you whiter than snow like nobody on earth can deal in jesus name don't allow unbelief to block your way don't allow tradition to block your way don't allow religion religion to block your way don't allow imposed blindness to block your way jesus is revealed to us john the baptist bore witness that's the only begotten son of god john the baptist bore witness is the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world and the father from heaven he bore witness as well that is my only begotten son if you're going to get saved if you're going to get to heaven that's the only way of giving to you there's no other way and there's no salvation in any other apart from jesus christ thank god tonight in my heart i believe i said in my heart i believe i said in my heart i believe that jesus is my savior it's my savior i said it's my savior it will be your savior till the end of your life and when you close your eyes here on earth if you believe on jesus it's going to prepare a place for you in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and take you it will hold you by your hand where is, where is your hand? It will hold that hand and then it will pull you over. You are in heaven forever and ever. For the people, for the people, the people that do not believe in Jesus and they call, and they call God the Father a liar and they call the Heavenly Father a liar and God the Heavenly Father said, This is my only begotten Son. And they said, No, Almighty God, I will not listen to you. I believe my religion. I don't believe you. Those people, when Jesus comes to take us to heaven it will leave them behind i pray you'll not be left behind i said you'll not be left behind because jesus is our savior he is my savior i said he is my savior he will never leave me i said he will never leave me and i will never leave him i'll stay with him until i see him in glory in jesus name somebody there shout amen 
We come to point number three now. The revelation of the scripture as the foundation. The revelation of scripture as the foundation. I'm looking at John chapter John chapter 5 and we're coming to verse 39. John chapter 5 verse 39 it says such the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. You know what Jesus was telling then he said don't you have scriptures there don't you have your bible there you know at that time all they had was the old testament they didn't have the new testament yet and that was their scripture and the lord said go and read the scriptures you'll find me there go and read the scriptures you'll find my portrait there go and read the scriptures you'll find my picture there go and read the scriptures you'll find my power there go and read the scripture you'll find the proclamation about me there as you read the scriptures and that's what the people that's what he did in fact when jesus rose from the dead let me show you something we're looking at luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 search the scriptures scriptures because as you search the scriptures they will talk about me they will tell about me they will testify about me and in them you have eternal life in Luke chapter 24 look at verse 27 verse 27 verse 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expanded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself think about that think about that Jesus Jesus Christ himself, he knew the scriptures were written about him and he started from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy and all the rest of the prophets and he was talking to them, enlightening them on things concerning himself. That's why he said, read the scriptures, study the scriptures, search the scriptures because they testify of me and it will give you everlasting life. Look at verse 32. And he said one to another, they not our heart born within us while he talked with us in the way while he opened unto us the scriptures he opened unto us the scriptures and then he was going from page to page from chapter to chapter from verse to verse in the old testament scriptures he was talking about himself what we never saw what we never thought of we began to see and then they said our hearts burned within us look at verse 45 then opened he their understanding that they might understand what the scriptures opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures there are many people that read the bible they see the ark of noah they don't see christ they see all those animals in the Old Testament, they don't see Christ. They see the tent, they don't see Christ. And they see all the walls of the Old Testament, they don't see Christ. They just read and read and read. Some even take examination. Some people, they even take examination on the scriptures. And they answer question, question, and answer, question, and answer, objective question, this and this. And when they answer all that, they still cannot see Jesus. But Jesus opened their eyes and they saw him. When you open your eyes tonight, you'll see Jesus. I said you'll see Jesus tonight. You'll see the Savior as you open your eyes. You'll see the sanctifier as you open your eyes. You'll see the power of God in man. All those things you found impossible before, he opens the scriptures to you. Light will come. Strength will come. Power will come. And the things that were impossible before will be possible from tonight in Jesus' name. I'm coming to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. I will read him from verse 42. Matthew chapter 21 from verse 42. It says in verse 42, Jesus says unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures? Have you not been reading the scriptures? Have you not been studying the scriptures? Have you not been searching the scriptures? Did you never read in the scriptures the stone? which the builders rejected the same is become the hedge of the corner this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes it's the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes it will do something in your life today 
Uh, we're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Search the scriptures. You'll find Jesus there. Read the scriptures. You'll find Jesus there. Study the scriptures. You'll find the Savior there, the Sanctifier there. You'll find the Baptizer, the Holy Ghost there. You'll find the Healer, the Redeemer, the Deliverer, Jesus Christ. You'll find him there. Look at, look at Acts, chapter 8. And I'm reading here from Bastachi, Acts chapter 8, Bastachi. Have you opened your Bible? Look at Bastachi. Tell me the first show was there. Okay, you are there. And Philip ran thither to him and had him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Understandest thou what thou readest? You know, people go to church and they're not born again, they don't understand what they have heard. You know the people that come to Bible study And there's no change in their lives They go there, they don't understand What they have read or what they have heard You know the people that go to retreat And they go to all these conventions And camp meetings and their lives Are not changed, they read, they read They read, they don't understand It is when you understand Transformation will come to your life Like it's coming tonight Salvation will come like it's coming tonight. A mighty change will come in your life like it's coming tonight. Understandest thou, understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture, the place of the scripture, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his share, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, I plead with you. I'm begging of you, of whom speaketh the prophet days of himself of another. He was reading the passage of scripture. Jesus was there. The picture of Jesus was there. The portrait of Jesus was there. The pronouncement concerning Jesus Christ was there. He couldn't see Jesus. So he said, I read this over and over before. Now Philip tell me, of whom is this person talking? Is he talking of himself? Is he talking of another? Look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began where? At the same scripture and preach unto him. Tell me. He preached unto him, Jesus. That means then, as we go to the scriptures, the Old Testament, from beginning to the very end, from Moses to all the prophets, they witness fully concerning Jesus Christ. And they witness conclusively concerning him, Jesus Christ. But let me come to something here in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 45. John chapter 5, we're reading from verse 45. It says in John chapter 5, verse 45, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, whom ye trust. Even Moses, whom ye trust. Look up here for a moment. You remember that blind man that was born blind and then Jesus uh, touched him and told him to go and walk, uh, wash in the pool of Siloam and he came, his blind eyes were open. Like your blind eyes will be open tonight. Miracle will happen to you tonight. And then the Pharisees were asking him, they said, who opened your eyes? He said, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. They said, how do you know it's Jesus? He said, he told me this, he told me that, and I did what he said, and lo and behold, I was born blind, but now I can see. Once I was blind, but now I can't see. Somebody there, once I was sick, but now I am well. Once I was sinful, now I am saved. Once I was weak, now I am strong. Once I was yielding, falling to temptation, but now I am victorious in Jesus' name. And so they said, we don't know the man. We, but we know Moses. Moses is the one we're believing. And Moses is the one we're following. And the man said, I'm surprised that you don't know him. But he opened my eyes. They may not know him, but you will know him. That's what Jesus was saying. You say you trust him, Moses. 
You say you believe in Moses and you say you accept everything Moses has said. Look at verse 46. For he, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Look at that. Jesus said, Moses wrote of me. He wrote of him. And then he said, But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Do you believe what part? Do you remember what part of the Bible Moses wrote? I said, Do you remember what part of the Bible Moses wrote? One, tell me. Two, tell me. Three, tell me. Four, tell me. Five, tell me. He wrote Genesis to Deuteronomy. And then Jesus said, he wrote of me. And then you are wondering, where did Moses write about him? We're coming to Genesis now because Moses wrote of him. We're coming to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his seal. It's talking about the virgin born Christ, the one that didn't know a man, that, that is the mother, didn't know a man, and Jesus is the seed of that virgin, the seed of the woman. That's where Moses first of all wrote about the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, Somebody is coming, he's the redeemer, he's the deliverer, he will bruise the head of the devil and Jesus will and the, the devil will bruise his heel that is he'll be nailed to the cross Moses spoke about that and as you see that Jesus Christ tonight the head of the devil will be scattered the head of the devil will be crushed and everything the devil ever planned against your life they are broken tonight they are crushed tonight they are scattered tonight and then you are released you are set free in Jesus name he said, Moses wrote about me, number one, as the seed of the woman. Look at this now, number two. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49, and we're reading from verse 10. Genesis chapter 49, we're looking at verse 10. It says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, and the no lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Moses is saying, uh, somebody is coming, and he named him Shiloh. And then he says, he'll have the scepter. He'll have the rod of the ruler, of the king, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall all the gathering of the people be. Who are we gathered to tonight? I said, who are we gathered to tonight? What two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And Moses said, he is coming, he is coming. The scepter of authority and the rod of power, the rod of anointing, the rod that, break, that breaks every pot in pieces. He is coming. And all the pots of concoction, the rod or the deed about your life, is set up, break everything tonight will shatter everything tonight. He says, Moses wrote about me. And he said, that one Shiloh is coming. He has the rod of power and authority in his hand. And anything that had been waging war against your life, it stretches up that rod. All those things are scattered in Jesus' name. Now, Exodus, Exodus, we're talking about what Moses said. He wrote about him. I'm looking at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 3. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of, the, of this month, they shall, they, shall take, they shall take to them every man a lamb. Every man a lamb. Every man tell me a lamb. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. A lamb for a house. It's right here about Jesus. You must know that because you must remember when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold the lamb of God that taketh away all the sin of the world. Every sin in your life you'll take away today. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord and the blood that's the blood of the lamb the blood of the lamb that will take every curse away tonight 
that will take every sickness away tonight, that will take every infirmity away tonight, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Premature death will pass over you. Suicide will pass over you. All the accidents will pass over you. And then death, second death in hellfire will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I destroy, when I smite the land of Egypt. Number one, Moses wrote about Jesus as the seed of the woman. Number two, Moses wrote about Jesus as Shiloh. The one that has the rod of power, the, the scepter, and it comes to break everything breaking and shakeable out of your life in Jesus name number three he wrote about him as the Passover lamb the Passover lamb the one that was that shed his blood so that his blood will cleanse all our sins away we're coming to Leviticus now Leviticus chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 11 Leviticus chapter 17 and we're reading from verse 11 Leviticus 17 tell me the verse Verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement. To make, tell me. To make, tell me, an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. It is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Look up for a moment. What's atonement? What's atonement? Let me use another word. Appeasement. Appeasement. That is, you're being at, uh, you know, at war against the almighty God. And God said, I am angry at the sinner every day. And the wrath of God is hanging like this. About to fall on you. And then the blood, the blood of the sacrifice, the atoning blood is shed. And then you take the cleansing in the blood. And, G and God said, I am appeased. Your sins are atoned for. My anger will not be upon you anymore. Because another person has died your death. And because of that, now you are free. Now I am free. Say for yourself, I am free free from judgment I am free free from wrath I am free that word atonement what's the word I said what's the word look at Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 I'm reading from verse from verse 9 Romans chapter 5 verse 9 much more than being now justified by his blood you see that by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him for if when we were enemies or we reconciled to god by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life give me a good amen, amen. and not only so but we also joy in god through our lord jesus christ by whom we have received what did we receive i said what did we receive the atonement the appeasement atonement because all our sins are not forgiven all our sins are not forgotten and moses wrote about that in genesis he wrote about jesus as the seed of the woman in genesis he wrote about him as the scepter as a shiloh the one that has the rod of authority and leviticus he wrote about him as uh, the as the uh, atoning sacrifice and then in exodus he wrote about him as the passover lamb now let's come to Numbers. He wrote about him in Numbers. We're coming to Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. Numbers chapter 21. And we're reading from verses 8 and 9. Are you there? And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall be that everyone, everyone, are you there? Everyone, I said, Are you there? The mercy of God covers you tonight. The provision of Christ covers you tonight. 
and all the solution that the Lord has done for us on the cross of Calvary, that solution is yours tonight. That everyone that is beaching, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made his serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaching any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. When he beheld the serpent of brass, tell me, he lived. You don't know that Moses wrote that and he wrote concerning Christ. We're looking at John chapter 3. John chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 14. John chapter 3 verse 14. That's what Jesus said that Moses wrote concerning him. And this was written concerning Jesus. Look at John chapter 3 verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, there you are. Even so, must the son of man be lifted up. That whosoever, whosoever, somebody there is believing on the Lord tonight. Whosoever, I see somebody there is believing Jesus tonight. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life you have everlasting life we come to numbers chapter 24 because he said moses wrote of me numbers chapter 20 chapter 24 and i'm reading from verse 17 numbers chapter 24 we're reading from verse 17 i shall see him but not now look at that i shall see him here balaam said i shall see him but not but not now i shall behold him but not now because jesus was still to come in the future but now this man was seeing jesus afar off and that's what moses wrote about because moses wrote numbers and he said i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not neither there shall there shall come tell me a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Shez. In verse 19, out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. That's Jesus. He will have dominion. I said he will have dominion. In verse 17, what, what is he called in verse 17? The star. Everybody shout the star. the star. I say shout the star. the star. Look at Revelation chapter 22 verse 16. Revelation chapter 22. And we're reading from verse 16. I Jesus. I sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and the morning star. Moses wrote about him. That's the star. I said that's the star. And because it's a star, it'll shine the light into your life in Jesus' name. Genesis, Moses wrote about him, the seed of the woman. In Genesis, Moses wrote about him, a Shiloh, the one that is to come and the gathering of the people shall be unto him. In Exodus, Moses wrote about him, is a lamb, the Passover lamb. I want to see the blood of that lamb upon the tables, upon the lintels of your heart, death will pass over you. And then in Leviticus, he wrote about him as the atoning sacrifice. His blood has been given to be an atonement for us. And then in Numbers, is the uplifted substitute. Where he says he lifted him up so that whosoever looks to him and believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. In that same Numbers, he wrote about him as a star and a scepter with universal dominion. Now we come to the final book that uh, Moses wrote Deuteronomy chapter 18 Deuteronomy chapter 18 I'm reading from verse 15 Deuteronomy chapter 18 and we're reading from verse 15 Moses wrote about me the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet capital P from the midst of thee and of thy brethren like unto me unto him shall ye hack him unto him shall ye hack him look at verse 18 i will raise them up a prophet capital p 
from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name I will require each of him Christ is speaking now I will hear I said I will hear I said I will hear is the prophet that was to come and that's what we're told in acts of the apostles chapter 3 acts of the apostles chapter 3 we're reading from verse 22 acts chapter 3 verse 22 i'm waiting for you to open your bible acts tell me acts of the apostle chapter what chapter 3 are you there verse 22 are you there now verse 22 tell me the first two words there tell me again tell me the name of the man you see there for Moses, look at verse 22, for Moses truly, truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things. When he speaks to you of salvation, him shall ye hear of all things. When he speaks to you of righteousness, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He is speaking to us, him shall ye hear in all things. He's talked to you about marriage, about one man, one wife, until death do us part. Him shall ye hear in all things. He talks to you about believing the Lord and enduring to the end because he said he that endures to the end the same shall be saved he says believe him and stay with him him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you verse 23 and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet the lord jesus shall be destroyed from among the people i will not be destroyed i said i will not be destroyed that's why I'm going to listen to Jesus Christ in every doctrine, in every teaching, in every statement, everything that he made. He said, go into all the world, teaching all nations, all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you until the end of the world. And we have the word now in the Old Testament, New Testament, everything compiled for us in the Holy Bible. And thank God I believe the Bible. Thank God I'm reading the Bible. Thank God I study the Bible. Thank God I endeavor to apply the Bible to my life. And I'm going to take everything the Lord has said. Look at verse 26 unto you first. God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. You are blessed tonight. In turning away every one of you from his iniquity. We have seen the witness of John the Baptist, we have seen the witness of the Father, we have seen the witness of the Scriptures, we have seen the witness of Moses. We, the witness concerning Christ is clear. The witness concerning Christ is complete. The witness concerning Christ is conclusive. This is He, is the Savior. This is He, is the Master. This is He, is the Redeemer. This is He, is the one that has come to take all our sins away. This is He, is our Librator, is your Librator tonight. Turn away from sin and turn to the Savior. Turn away from darkness and turn to the light. And receive him wholeheartedly as your Lord and Savior. And something good will happen to you tonight. You must see him before you go. I will see him before I go. He will touch me before I go. He will turn around my life before I go. He will forgive your sin before you go. He will sanctify you before you go. Look at him. A miracle will happen in your life. Rise up and let's talk to the Lord before we go. Rise up there, rise up there, rise up there. Because the Father has spoken about his only begotten Son. John the Baptist has spoken about this one, the Savior, the Savior, the very Son of God. And Moses spoke about him. He said, it's the seed of the woman. It's the seed of the woman. He will crush the head of the devil that is tormenting your life tonight. He said, it's the Passover lamb. When I see the blood, I will pass over. Over you he said this is the star this is the star it's the one that has the dominion he has the dominion tonight hand over your life to the lord hand over your life to the lord and say lord jesus reign over my life reign over my life rule over my life i believe you lord tonight i believe you lord tonight i believe you lord tonight and you give your heart you give your heart you give your life unto the lord jesus christ 
pray, call upon him. There's no doubt in your heart anymore. Jesus, this is he. This is he. Is the son of God. This is he. Is the savior of the world. This is he. Is the deliverer. Is the liberator. This is he. Is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other salvation. There's no salvation in any other name. No salvation in any other name. No power in any other source. And there's no authority. There's no anointing in any other place. The anointing that breaks every yoke we find in Christ tonight. Call upon him. Call upon him and say, Lord, I believe. Lord I believe Lord I believe Hand over your life to the Lord Hand over your life to the Lord And the Lord will save you And the Lord will change your life The Lord will transform your life And the Lord will see you through That yoke it will break Open your mouth and pray Open your mouth and pray I thought that when people know how to pray They can pray more than this Let heaven hear your voice let heaven hear your voice. Let heaven hear your voice. Outside there, hand over your life to the Lord. Lord, now I believe. Lord, now I believe. Lord, now I believe. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. He'll save you tonight. He'll forgive your sin tonight. He'll change your life tonight. All those bad habits, He'll break away from your life. All those sins, He'll cleanse away from your life. All those infirmities, he'll take away from your life. All the iniquity, all the iniquity, secret sin, secret sin, he'll wash everything away. The blood of Jesus cleanses and washes whiter than snow. Tell him, tell him. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on him, he'll save you. Call on him, he'll change your life. Nobody can transform your life like Christ. Nobody can turn your life around like Christ. Nobody can put a new meaning into your life like Christ. Say, yes, Lord, I'm here. Yes, Lord, I'm here. Yes, Lord, I'm here. I turn away from darkness. I turn away from all my sins. And I will not go back to them anymore. I will not go back to my sins anymore. I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. Tell him tonight. Let him save you. Tell him tonight. Let him save you. Let him change your life. Let him break that yoke of sin out of your life. He'll do it. John the Baptist spoke about him. Behold the Lamb of God. He taketh away the sin of the world. And he'll take your sins away. His blood will wash you whiter than snow. Will take all the dirty things away from your life. Dirty thoughts, dirty action, dirty habit, dirty language. The blood of Jesus will wipe everything away. He'll take your guilt away. Will take your condemnation away. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Lord, I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord, now I'm strong against that temptation. Invite him in, invite him in. Behold, I stand at your door and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come into him, fellowship with him, I'll sup with him. Grants you salvation. Grants you new life. Grants you victory over sin. Grants you dominion. Grants you power to overcome. He is a sanctifier to you. He'll sanctify you. He'll make you holy. I'll give you another heart. 
Savior, sanctifier. He cleanses. He washes whiter than snow. He transforms the life. This is the time. Let him do it. This is the time. Let him do it. You been saved? Born again? Forgiven? They move ahead. The Father has given him to us as a sanctifier. And he purifies the heart. And as you call on him tonight and consecrate your life to him. And surrender afresh anew unto him. You sanctify and purify your heart. This is he. The Savior. This is he. The sanctifier. This is he. The baptizer in the Holy Ghost. He has power. Power. Power from on high. They take the weakness of your life away. And you receive of his fullness. You receive of his power. Endowment of power. He'll pour it down upon you. Believe. He'll do it. Believe. He'll do it. He wants to enter in. He wants to be all in all unto you. And he'll give you the power to go and sin no more. And the power to live a holy Transparent, righteous life. And the power to be an overcomer all around with the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. This is He. It's revealed unto us in His fullness and in His power receiving. Surrender to him. Yield unto him. Hand over your totality unto him. He'll receive you. He'll receive you. He rejects none. Accept him, he'll accept you. Receive him, he'll receive you. Believe on him, he'll save you. In Jesus' name we pray. And when people have said, In Jesus' name we pray. As bad and eyes closed, you are there. You see Jesus afresh tonight. That He is our Savior. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's bowed and eyes closed. You're telling the Lord tonight, I don't want to perish. I don't want to remain in darkness. I want to have Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I want to have the assurance in my heart. All my sins are forgiven and I'm saved. I want to be sure when I die, I'm going to heaven. If you're a backslider, tonight is the night of restoration. If you're a sinner, tonight is the night of salvation. He'll save you tonight. Raise up that hand and pray for you over here. You want him to save you. You want him to take away your sin. You want him to take your guilt away. Your condemnation away. You want him to take all the rope that binds you. The rope of, uh, of that backsliding from your life. Wherever you are. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Yes. God bless you there. God bless you there. Raise it up very well. As you're raising up your hand, you tell the Lord tonight, I believe Jesus is my savior. Tonight, I believe Jesus is my Savior. Tonight, I believe Jesus is my restorer. I will not remain in sin. I will not perish in sin. I'm not going to die in sin. Tonight, I come to Christ. Lord Jesus, save me. He will save you tonight. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these who are raising up their hands. Lord, I pray you restore the backsliders in Jesus' name. 
and I pray that the voice of the Lord will speak in their hearts that all their sins are forgiven. All their backsliding is taken away and bring them to the fresh fellowship of the Lord even tonight in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are coming to the Lord for the first time and Lord they are receiving you as their personal Savior according to your promise. Forgive their sin. Take their sins away. Take the guilt away. Take the condemnation away. And let your salvation register in their heart right now in Jesus' name. And the power to go out and live in newness of life grant to, unto every one of them now. Confirm that salvation by the witness of the Spirit in every heart right now. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Give me a good, good amen. Now you know that Jesus will break every yoke. Somebody there said, Jesus will break every yoke. His power will crush Satan out of your life. The power of demons, it will break. And the power of evil spirits, it will break. And whatever the challenges tonight you are sick, you have deformity, you have something the hospital said you cannot deal with, Jesus is here to deal with that tonight. And so, you have any sickness, you want God to heal, you raise up your hand. You have any infirmity, you want Jesus to take away, you can raise up your hand. And you have any kind of demonic attack, demonic oppression, affliction, you want the Lord to wipe away, you raise up your hand. And the head of the devil, it will break on your behalf tonight. It will crush the head of the devil tonight. It will give you the victory. And all those evil things crawling about in your body, everything will vanish away bad luck will go away the curse will go away the yoke will go away tonight somebody there is free somebody there tonight you are free father in Jesus name we thank you for the revelation of Jesus we thank you for the reaffirmation of Jesus we thank you for the recognition of Jesus and Lord you have given us the witness of who Jesus is and Lord we believe Lord will believe is the is the bright and is the bright and shiny star and is the bright morning star is the seed of the woman and he is the Shiloh is the one that has the rod of authority in his hand and is the one that is the Paschal lamb the Passover lamb you said when I see the blood I will pass over you you said whosoever will look on him is going to be saved is going to be healed is going to be delivered I bring all these people before you tonight oh Lord Lord, take all their sicknesses away in Jesus' name. All those infirmities I command, come out in Jesus' name. And the devil that is tormenting any life there, the demon tormenting any life there, evil spirit, evil power tormenting anyone there, I pray that the head of the enemy be crushed in Jesus' name. Set your people free. Set your people free. Free from sickness, set them free. Free from infirmity, set them free. Free from madness, set them free. Free from insanity, set them free. Free from bad luck, set them free. Free from poverty, set them free. Free from every yoke, set them free. And I pray that freedom will come to every life tonight in Jesus' name. Dominion in your life. Victory in your life. Deliverance in your life. Freedom in your life. In your life. A new life. Poverty cancelled. Darkness cancelled. Evil things cancelled. Be free. Be free. As you go out, you enjoy the freedom of the Lord. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your dominion. Receive your provision. You'll never be the same again. Thank you, Lord, for answering us. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Raise your voice to the Lord and praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for what he has done for you.